Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Uh, delighted to be joined by the voice of Queensbury Boxing, Dev Sarney. Dev, how are you? I'm all right. That was a that's a big claim, Danny. Big claim. Um, yeah, I'm all right. How are you? You're in Abu Dhabi, aren't you? I am. I am. At the moment, I'm just in the hotel room, so it's not overly impressive. I mean, it's a lovely hotel, but it's not, you know, being yeah. out on the beach or at Ferrari World or one of those sort of places. But yeah, it's cool. I've just come back from the workouts. Yeah, any good? That was all right. I mean, you've seen one workout, you've seen them all. There's an H&M in the shopping mall in Abu Dhabi. I mean, so what more could you want? What more could you want? <laughs> good, good. Uh, that, that's good. Good uh, coverage for H&M. Well yeah. done. I hope the money will be flowing in. <laughs> Look, before before I properly stop, so my audio is all right, yeah? Your audio is good. There might be a slight delay uh, yeah. between us, but apart from that. Normally I wear like the headset and then like it's been used in the in the thumbnail and stuff. And I realise I look like I'm trying to sell you a phone upgrade. So <laughs> got to be very careful. Are, it, are you it, trying to sell me? An, I mean, I'm happy with my current supplier, but are, are you trying to sell me an upgrade? <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of great deals out there. I mean, they're ringing me on the daily, these boys at the moment. The, the Vodafone guys, like, no. but yeah, all good, mate. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk. Let's dive into it. Um, what the what's Tyson Fury up to? What what's what's going on in that brain of the Gypsy King? Him and True Geordie going at it. What what did you make of that when you first saw it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, the question that you asked at the, at the start there, what's going on? I don't know. I don't, I don't think you can ever you can ever second guess what's happening with Tyson Fury. Um, going at it with True Geordie. I mean, I feel it's like, like at the end because he, he called him a few feet, called him bald, called him bearded. Like the, these are these are these are things that has happened to him. He is bald um, and he is bearded. He referred to Lou DiBella as bald in the past as well, whilst sitting there with no hair himself. So it seems to be a uh, like a fun thing that he says. So I'm not sure how much malice there is. There's a bit of a twinkle in his eye when he's saying that. However, I think at the very very end, where True Geordie's saying like, "Do you know how to turn your phone off?" By the way, look, that kind of thing. I think that does irritate Tyson a little bit, and that's the final the final thing there but um yeah I don't know it was a it was an interesting it was an interesting interview what did you think of it because um, there, there was there, essentially he's firing shots at you your lot saying uh the, these guys don't ask any questions here I am asking all the questions so what, what did you think I mean I've asked Frank Warren why <laughs> that's the best fight and couldn't he have done better but you know true Geordie went in all guns blazing didn't he but I think I don't think there was a lot of malice. I thought that he was kind of just messing about a little bit. And also, I wasn't sure if he was aware that the interview was still going when he unleashed the tirade. Because he seemed to be kind of saying goodbye and then kind of switched, a bit like that famous John Jones thing, where he's kind of talking to Cormier and then suddenly starts being really horrible. It seemed a bit like yeah. that, so I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was a little bit like kind of um, like he'd say maybe at a press conference, like the, these that like you bald headed you dosser. Did, I think he called him a dosser as well, like you little dosser. Like the, these are these are his favourite sort of jokey insults. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that if he actually had it in for True Geordie and was you know particularly insulted, that he'd be uh, you know he'd be firing off bigger shots than that. Um, but in terms of like in terms of the interview itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he did. It, it felt like he wanted to be the guy like, oh, I'm sick of all these YouTubers not asking any questions. I'm the guy. I'm going to ask him all the questions. And I think he got Tyson's back up a little bit by starting off asking, him, oh, do you see the KSI fight? Oh, what do you think of the kind of Ben drugs thing and, and that kind of thing? And when you're speaking to someone like Tyson Fury, who is the news, who doesn't need to be attached to other names in order to be newsworthy, that that's going to get his back up. I mean, look, you, you do this all the time. You're doing interviews every day. If there's someone who hasn't got too much of a profile, you attach their name to a story or to someone who has a big profile and it's it gets them more views, essentially. So Tyson's sitting there and he's being asked, what do you think of KSI the other week? As the opening question, you know, it, it's not great, but there's nothing wrong with asking him about what he thinks about KSI. There's nothing wrong with really asking him about the, the other kind of stuff. Do it later in the interview. When you've round up, when you've asked him how he is, when you asked him how his train is going, he said he's got to pop off to the gym. Oh, like, what are you doing today? You're sparring? Like, just uh, 
he didn't lay the table so he just sort of went straight in for for like what he had in mind and, and I think he wanted to really stick it on Tyson so what you're saying is foreplay was largely inadequate and he proceeded to the yeah, main event far too I, soon I think so I think so Danny and, and you strike me as someone who who revels in foreplay so you you must have you must have looked on and been like look where's where's the foreplay yeah. um but but it's important oh, both like, parties he, he, get something out of the interview, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's kind of it. But look, I think ultimately he felt that Tyson Fury shouldn't be fighting Derek Chisora. Mm. And he basically told him in about 10 or 15 ways, I don't think you should be fighting Derek Chisora. And it's he can say, like, oh, what about your legacy? Oh, wh who else was available? And all, all of these things were all amounting to the same destination. And the destination is true Geordie doesn't believe Tyson Fury should fight Derek Chisora. And Tyson's stance, Frank's stance, the stance right now is Tyson fought, I think, once in 2020, once in 2021. So far, fought once in 2022. This is a world heavyweight champion. He needs to fight. He's He wants to fight a second time in 2022. He wanted that to be Usyk. It's not Usyk. He wanted it to be Joshua. It's not Joshua. That's not his fault. He couldn't get those guys. He's got a stadium to fill. Um, and you're not going to necessarily, as much as you can say it's the Tyson Fury show and he can sell it all out on his own. I'm sure that that is true to an extent. You still need the public's buy-in. You still need a dance partner who is famous. And it is Derek Chisora's fame, plus coming off a, a, a career best win, in my opinion, which has landed in the fight. I'm sure if he'd have lost to Pulev, he wouldn't be in the running. But that that's that's kind of, that, that's what it is. And, and he's not fighting Chisora forever. He's just his next fight before he fights Usyk. And then there may be Joyce. But it's like being made out to be like, oh my God, I can't believe he's fighting Chisora. Like, it's... Uh, it's crazy. But yeah, True Geordie basically told him that in 10 or 15 ways. <laughs> yeah, I think he did labour the point. I mean, I do understand the point. I have some sympathy with it. I think for me, and I'm sure you'll, you'll say there's reasons why it's not possible, but surely there could have been someone else almost as marketable as Shizora who he hasn't previously fought. Because I think that's most people's gripe. It's not that Shizora's not a good fighter and he isn't coming off a good win. It's more that we've seen this movie twice before. Yeah, and, and, and at which point you've got to say, so who are those guys? Joe Joyce would have been lovely, but Joe Joyce has ruled himself out. And also, Joe Joyce is an absolute nightmare to fight. And when you've got to fight Usyk in, in like February, March, you don't Joe, you don't treat Joe Joyce like that, right? I mean, Joe Joyce will, uh, he'll give him a bloody good go. He might even beat him. He's, a, he's an absolute monster. So from Tyson's perspective, you're probably not going to fight Joe Joyce and then fight Usyk three months later. Joe Joyce is a destination fight, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. There's a few destination fights out there that you build towards. Chisora is a step on the way to a destination of Usyk. And maybe Usyk is like, like you know, that's your World Cup final, but then you're going to have other ones if you're going to carry on your career. Joe Joyce is one of those guys. Um, so, what? yeah, who else is there? So, Joe, Joe Joyce... <clears throat> couldn't do it. Andy Ruiz, he's going to fight Wilder. Look, Frank's been down the list and you end up coming to your, your Kosovutskis and your uh, Maka Madalev and your, your kind of your Bacolis of this world. And profile-wise, none of these guys even touch Derek Chisora. Sure. And also, there's not a there's not an overwhelming case that they're better than Derek Chisora, by the way. How many of these guys would you back heavily to just go and beat Pulev? How many of these guys would you back heavily to to uh, perhaps beat Dillian White the first time round and be beating him the second time round? Chisora, Chisora is a you know he's a strong guy coming off a career best win. You you can't hand on your heart say that Kosobutsky would knock him out. Like why why where would you get that confidence to say that? Yeah, I agree. But what I would also say is you could say with a fair degree of confidence that Tyson Fury comfortably beats Chisora, whereas these other guys, you wouldn't be able to say that from evidence base because we've seen it happen already. Whereas a Bacoli, Tyson might beat Bacoli in three rounds, who knows? But we haven't seen it, so we don't know. And I think that's the, the crux of it. Yeah, well, look, and to that point, because I do understand that point, to the point that where I, I would go against that is... We've been told for years this is war Chisora now, right? The the win that Tyson has, 
the wins that Tyson has earlier on in his career over Chisora have largely been discredited, have largely been omitted from his resume. People ignore that. You say, oh, he's only beaten Klitschko and Wilder. Suddenly, because he's fighting Chisora again, everyone's like, oh, yeah, but he beat Chisora. But to that, that was eight years ago, the last one. Tyson doesn't box like that anymore. Chisora boxes now like he just doesn't give a... Yeah. That, that, I asked him, what's the difference between War and uh, Del Boy? He said, War just doesn't give an F, you know? So he's uh, he's different now. He's he's had some good wins since then. And Tyson's style now to not necessarily box and move, to not necessarily be fleet of foot, you know, moving about, doesn't really do that anymore, right? He's more of like a, a bulldozer. He's just a big kind of monster suffocating his opponents. That style that he's got now actually lends itself more to Derek Chisora. Because before, Derek Chisora's had to go looking for Tyson and he's struggled to find him. He's not going to struggle to find him this time. He's going to be right in front of him. So um, let's see. I mean, I suppose there's a concern as well that in part this fight's justified by it being, I'm not going to say a tune-up because that's disrespectful, but a prelude, if you like, to an Usyk fight. If the Usyk fight then doesn't happen next, it kind of seems like a bit of a waste of time in retrospect. Yeah, I mean, look, to uh, to everything that I'm hearing from every interview, Usyk's talking, he's talking about fighting Fury. Um, Fury's talking about fighting Usyk. Everything that Frank said is talking about fighting Usyk in the early part of next year. I would imagine if that Usyk fight wasn't there, then it, maybe it wouldn't be Derek Chisora. Maybe you would try and find a, a kind of an alternative destination fight. But all the noises are, it's going to be Usyk next. It was supposed to be Usyk now, but Usyk ruled himself out. Usyk is the fight that Tyson wants because, you know, that, I mean, he's he's the only dispute out there to Tyson at the moment. He's already beaten Wilder. Uh, and Joshua at this point is, a, you know, needs to rebuild to, to get back in the mix kind of thing. And just a, a final one on that, Usyk Chisora is a fight that's been brought up many times in the build-up for the third fight between Tyson and Derek. Did you have it close? Uh, I thought Usyk won. I thought Usyk won. I'm not. I'm not going to go back and change my <laughs> uh, change my answer because uh, yeah, I thought Usyk won. But what I will say is that I thought Chisora gave him a tougher fight over 12 rounds than Joshua did in, in 24 yeah. rounds. Usyk looked more uncomfortable in those 12 rounds. And I have gone back and, and watched the fight since that. He just looked more uncomfortable. Um, and you see his, like, his hand raised at the end as well. It was more like he didn't even seem happy with his performance. Mm. So he knew he'd had a rough and tough night against Derek Chisora. And Derek Chisora basically showed a bit of a blueprint as to how heavyweights can beat Alexander Usyk. And, and that was that's a blueprint that you know if Tyson's going to box him that way he can he can follow that blueprint just stick it right on him. Chisora showed AJ essentially how to beat Usyk and AJ didn't didn't follow the plan. Um, so yeah, that that that's my feeling on that. Usyk definitely beat him, um, but he knew about it. He knew he'd been in a fight. Now you referenced earlier the fact that a lot of these YouTube interviewers go around the houses, ask about a lot of different topics, searching for that elusive headline, um, and then finally get to the, the meat of it. We've kind of done it the other way around. So as you've been so kind to do that, I want to give you the opportunity now to talk about the Queensbury schedule for the rest of 2022. Yeah, look, we're, we're in a good spot. We're in a good spot. We've got, um, so it's 2nd November today, so we've got 11th coming up, York Hall, the return of Nick Ball. Nick Ball's a, he's a, he's a bad dude. Beast. Do you see any 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 of the stuff that he's been saying? He's just uh, like he said that he'd smash Lee Wood, he'd smash Josh Warrington. Obviously, you expect fighters to say this, but when he's saying it, yeah, you just you believe it. There's no, there's nothing in his eyes telling you that he lacks any sort of self confidence. He is a he is a rising star um, in the Queensbury stable and and in British boxing. And if you don't follow him on social media, follow him on social media. Presumably, you do, Danny. Of course. We follow each other, yeah, yeah. in fact. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you've seen the running videos that he puts up on his Instagram. Oh, yeah. Why is that so watchable? <laughs> it just is, Belly. isn't it? It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just a bloke running around Liverpool in the dark, but it's it's so good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, you really sold it to the audience there, Dev, I've got to say. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, look, I love Nick Ball. So he's back um, on the 11th. Then you've got um, also on that show, David Adelaide, another rising uh, star in the Queensbury stable. He's coming back. Uh, he's on that show, Willie Hutchinson as well. Uh, then we're Telford, November 19th, Liam Davis against Yonut Baluta. Um, and Baluta's a nutcase, mate. I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of the stuff that's been going out. He's been like saying, like, Davis, this is for you, and then like hitting the bag. And um, Davis is firing back, but it's a. Uh, I spoke to. Um, Who have you got for that? Well, I spoke to Gamal Yafai about an hour or so ago, and he's back in Baluta, although he says he hasn't seen that much of Davis. I've got to give him that kind of get out mm. qualification. Um, I kind of fancy Davis. I think there's more there that we haven't seen from him yet. And I think he can up his game and, and get past him. But it's a tough ask. Yeah, I mean, every time uh, every time you sort of think, oh, maybe Davis is in a bit bit too deep here. Like the Mark Leach fight. Mark Leach was favourite. Mark Leach had a very good win against Chris Bork, against yeah. Ashfak as well. And Liam Davis didn't really have anything on his record to suggest that he'd be able to just beat Mark Leach. But he did, and he did so well. So every time um, he's asked a few questions, he seems to up his game more and more. And mm. there's something about him where if you back against him or if he feels you're backing against him, he loves it because he loves proving people wrong. So, yeah, that, that's a good one. Anthony Yard's back. He's going to hopefully like knock out this guy in front of him and, <laughs> and then go on to fight after the Um Like, imagine if he doesn't. That would be, that'd be horrible. So... Um, <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's a he's a bit a bit of a run out, um, and then it's all roads lead to Arta Baturbiev in January. I think end of January. I think obviously not been announced yet because he needs to beat this guy. Um, we had David Avenition on the show, but obviously he's pulled out now because he's a he's involved in quite a big fight. He's going to fight Terry Crawford. <laughs> how dare he? I'm sure he'd rather be in Telford. Yeah. <laughs> How dare he? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's November 19th. November 26th, Parker Ryder, um, which is essentially a world title fight because obviously Canelo's going to duck the winner. He don't want that smoke, does he? So <laughs> uh, of them, essentially no. a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's essentially a world title fight. Um, good fighters on that show. Dennis McCann, who I'm going to go and see tomorrow. Commonwealth title fight for him. Sam Noakes, Commonwealth title fight for him. Pierce O'Leary, who's like... Have you, did you see his knockout last time out? Yeah. He's just well, he's aptly named, isn't he? Throws the guy in time. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Hamza Shiraz, who um, who will be keeping an eye on what happens with Denzel Bentley and, and Yanabek, which is the weekend before. So lots coming up. And then obviously it's it's the big one, Fury Chisora on December 3rd. So it's, think, it's all happening, Danny. It's all happening. I think it might be the... Um... I mean, the long coming up. I think there might be the um, Deborah charity show in there somewhere as well. Cheeky Deborah night there as well, yeah. yeah. So I think um, I think Bomber Brown, who is a a new uh, Queensbury heavyweight, I'm pretty sure he will be on that show. Call you some Bomber, and I mean stable mate. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you better be able to bang. So, uh, like, I, I can't imagine he'll go four and zero with no knockouts. We can't be having that. From <laughs> Can you Brown. imagine? <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to take him to one side. Say, Bomber, let's just let's call. But that's it's his actual name. It's not like a nickname. No, no, it's no. It's his actual name. It's Bomber. Yeah, B O M A. Um, I think I'm emceeing that as well. So I, I think I'll be going. I'll be up in Telford and then Who else? come down. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Come down and then go back up to Telford the next day. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a madness, but it'll be fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we work very hard, Dev. We work very hard. People just see us in Abu Dhabi and Telford. And they say, <laughs> how did these guys get there? What have they done to deserve such good fortune? But, you know, we, we put the hours in. Yeah, yeah, we're always grafting away, Danny, aren't we? Always grafting away. I mean, this is work. You know, it's pleasant, but it's, this is work. I mean, God. Do you think yeah, I want to be here talking to you? I mean, God. Exactly. Some <laughs> would say it's very hard work to even sustain a conversation with me. Some would argue that. Your wife, for one, perhaps. <laughs> Top of the list, mate. Top of the list. I mean, when when I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm then seeing the um, the Nick Ball show. So I've been going through all practicing. She's she's my long suffering wife, having to hear all of this, trying to roll my arms, you know, all sorts of nonsense like that. I I do feel for poor Mrs. Sony at times. Does she offer you some kind of constructive feedback? No, she. I think she just tries to get it out of the way as, as quickly, quickly as, as possible. possible. So it, it tends to just be a kind of a thumbs up. Yeah, that's a good one. Can we? 
because because there are another thirteen to get through. So we are still yeah. talking about the MCing, aren't we? <laughs> we are at this point. <laughs> right. Just checking. It's a family show, Dev. It's a family show. Brilliant. Well, really appreciate your time. I'm going to get back to the wonders that Abu Dhabi has to offer. Um, and let's catch up when I get back to the UK. Who you got for Bivol Ramirez, by the way? Bivol. As long as he takes it seriously and doesn't let his performance level dip from the Canelo fight, he should win. Yeah, I think I, don't, I haven't seen too much of Ramirez. Only little bits and bobs. And, I'm, you know, he's got a great record. But, uh, yeah, we shall see. I'll be watching. Be a good one. Good stuff. Dev, really appreciate it, mate. Right. Take care. Yeah, mate.